Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. It's Sean from Sean K Beauty. Today we're going to jump into the True Skincare Series Part 2 and this is going into the truth behind La Mer. You all have asked me, is it worth the price? Is the Miracle Broth really a Miracle Broth? Um, why the premium? That kind of thing. So I'm going to go into that. However, remember the True Skincare Series is not about determining or telling you, yes, go and buy this. No, don't go and buy this. It's really giving you information and that information is is what you're going to use to um, determine your buying experience. Does that make sense? So hopefully you'd like, subscribe, and share if you're new. My background is microbiology and biochemistry. I bring science to beauty, and I'm also a luxury YouTuber. So let's start with the brand itself. La Mer was actually birthed from the visionary, and his name is Max Huber. He was a rocket scientist, and unfortunately, he ended up being subject to a really bad accident that happened in the lab where he ended up enduring severe burns to the face. In his frenzy to really heal his skin, he ended up <clears throat> discovering the world of sea kelp or seaweed as we know it. And seaweed is very abundant in the ocean. Now there is a particular type of seaweed that Max was actually uh, intrigued by and it is called Microcystis pyrifi. And this had the ability to grow and still has the ability to grow two to three feet uh, per day and fish feed from this algae and it still has that regenerative property. So Max Huber in his uh, intelligence is looking at how is it that this, this plant is able to regenerate itself. Um, and if it can do that, then it will have some benefits to the skin. So that's how La Mer was birthed and you can look at all the ingredients um, on the list of La Mer's products and you will see sea kelp or some derivative of seaweed is found in each of those products. And I'm gonna talk about some of those products in this video as well. So the, the discovery of this was intriguing for him as a physicist. Um, he did understand light and heat energy very well and really, the environment that they found that Max Huber had, like this little lab, I guess, down in a basement somewhere, was a lot of light and heat energy working with this um, my, microcystis pyrifi. Now, the problem and where this really got intriguing for me and somewhat spooky is the fact that, you know, when Max Huber was alive, he and he had his daughter to be pretty much one like a protege and she thought she knew all the secrets to her dad's formula but a lot of what Max did was not documented and he took a lot of these secrets with him to the grave because in his experiments it was a lot of intuitiveness trial and error that he was doing to really perfect um, this miracle broth. So Estee Lauder uh, was intrigued by La Mer and they reached out to Max Huber when he was alive. They wanted to acquire his brand. He said no because he didn't want his vision to become convoluted and nor did he want, you know, his company to become dissolved or to become something else, which tends to happen when a larger company um, acquires a smaller one. So that didn't happen. He continued on in his journey. And then when he passed away in 1991, his daughter thought she knew everything to keep his company afloat and realized that she could not recreate what her dad did. And in her fear, ended up calling Estee Lauder and asking them if they would still be willing to purchase her dad's um, company, and they did. So that's how Estee Lauder ended up acquiring La Mer. I found that to be interesting because a lot of times we're picking up products off a shelf, but we really don't know the backstory of the brand and how it was acquired or the visionary and what they went through with curating product. Mm -hmm. And I think that helps us to connect with the brand too and does trigger our buying experience as well. So Estee Lauder acquired La Mer and they too are still trying to perfect La Mer because um, they have brought in psychics and mediums to try to reach Max Huber beyond the grave. I hope you all did not hear that ambulance behind me or whatever it was because it's super duper noisy here guys because I'm right here by the street so I apologize in advance. 
All right, so let's talk about the ingredients in this brand as now that you know a little bit more about Max Huber, how La Mer ended up coming to be, the power of seaweed, and also how Estee Lauder acquired the brand as well. So seaweed, abundant in the ocean, it is enriched with bioactive compounds, namely carbohydrates. And one of those carbohydrates is polysaccharides which scientists are now discovering has even better uh, humectant properties than your hyaluronic acid. So hyaluronic acid, if you don't know, is hygroscopic in nature. It pulls water from the atmosphere and gets it onto the skin, locks, brings it onto the skin, right? Um, but when we're talking about seaweed and having you know, this benefit, its water binding properties are even much more um, better than your hyaluronic acid. Um, the polysaccharides help to retexturize, also is a thickening agent and brings in that moisture to the skin. And seaweed also has not only these humectant properties, but it has anti-aging properties as well. And what scientists have discovered about seaweed is its ability to block MMPs. And I've talked about, I've talked about matrix metalloproteinases in previous videos when I broke down the microbiomes and MMPs and also free radicals. But what MMPs are, they are enzymes that are triggered by UVA and UVB rays, radiation, and they go into the deep layers of the skin and they bring about collagen degradation. So using seaweed or sea kelp in your skincare is actually preventing or inhibiting MMPs from having that ability when you are exposed to light. Does that make sense? So great anti-aging properties. This also has peptides in it as well. So seaweed has the ability to produce peptides. Peptides are proteins. They're small proteins that actually bring about um, moisturization to the skin and they also help with elasticity. So I wanted to talk about two other properties with seaweed as well. Uh, one is polyphenols, which is great for scavenging free radicals. Free radicals, as you know, I've mentioned in previous videos, if they are balanced by an antioxidant, it will really be beneficial to the skin. Um, they loan the free radical and electrons so that its outer orbital or outer shell can become balanced, okay? So this is scavenging those free radicals and preventing you know, the deep wrinkles and degradation to the skin. So that's what polyphenols does. Another company that uses polyphenols is your Caudalie brand. They concentrate a lot on grapes and the skin of grapes to get those polyphenols to um, be the backbone of their line. So just uh, FYI there. And the other property that I wanted to mention was the fact that there is anti-inflammatory properties with seaweed as well. So when we break out or when we have a flare up, we use an anti-inflammatory to reduce the redness or to minimize the appearance of that breakout. So as you can see, there's a lot of properties and benefits that are happening in seaweed. Also, uh, understanding light and energy as a physicist, Max Huber also understood that seaweed had to have some sort of sunscreen ability when exposed to ultraviolet radiation. And that is what scientists are finding even now in the lab is that seaweed has the ability to create its own sunscreen blocking property. So yes, there is miracle in this broth. However, when it comes to La Mer, I do wanna mention that there is fragrance in this product. So if you do have rosacea, if you do have eczema, um, dry skin, fragrance is known to um, trigger, you know, eczema, redness, rosacea. It is known to, you know, really take it over the top. And, you know, even if you're not opposed to fragrance, even if you're not opposed to fragrance, it can become, co you can become co-sensitized to it. Um, and when I say co-sensitized, you may not um, see any effect of the fragrance while using it, but it will cause, you know, an allergy over time. However, with that being said, let me just be honest, you know, curating products with raw ingredients, uh, the pungent smell that comes from a lot of raw ingredients, you guys are not gonna be happy with, and you're gonna be asking, you know, companies to try to mask that. So, you know, 
it's a, it's a really fine line there. That's all I'm gonna say to that. So the first product I wanna talk about is Le, the La Mer Renewal Oil. This has sunflower seed oil in it, Yohopa oil, Laminaria, which is a derivative of seaweed. Um, it also has caffeine in here. Caffeine is a great vasoconstrictor, really great for you know reducing puffiness, that kind of thing. Um, but this is heavily fragranced. I'm just gonna put that out there. So if you're looking for this, um, you know, most people would say it's more like a perfume oil as opposed to being a facial oil. Um, but again, everybody's opinion is subjective, so I will put that out there. But a lot of really key properties are, are happening in this oil. What I wanna say about these oils too is that they're very, stable right they don't oxidize they're resistant to oxida oxidation and they really act as emollients to smooth out the skin cell edges so really getting nourishment from this it has an anti it is an anti-inflammatory um, antioxidant properties are in here and we just talked about all of the really great benefits of seaweed and laminaria being a derivative of seaweed is what's in here as well. And you'll see that again, like throughout the backbone of all of La Mer's products, you will see that it is sea kelp. And that tends to be um, the case with a lot of brands. Like sea kelp is the backbone of La Mer, uh, polyphenols is the backbone of Caudalie, and the Rose de May is the backbone of Chantecaille. So these um, companies have found their own specialties that they want to build off of. Does that make sense? All right, friends. So I want to talk about the La Mer Firming and Lifting Mask. Now, this one has a long list of really helpful ingredients. One of them, namely being licorice root extract. Licorice root is a great anti-inflammatory, but it's also great for brightening the skin. It also has soybean in here as well, which is also really great for preventing pigments from moving around in the skin. I, this with the licorice root is really going to bring that brightening to the skin. But remember, there is fragrance in here, so I do want to put that out there. There's Cyclomyces, there's your Bifida lysate, a lot of humectants, a lot of antioxidants. And there's also acetylene hexapeptide 8, which we know with peptides, they just really come in to bring elasticity to the skin, the firming to the skin, and moisture to the skin, plumping up the uh, fine lines and wrinkles that we see that we want to get rid of. Okay, friends, let's go into the La Mer Eye Concentrate. This one actually has lime tea concentrate in it, which actually acts as a powerhouse. It is enriched with antioxidants, but this starts off with seaweed. That is the first ingredient. Then they go into water, isodotacane, glycerin, that kind of thing. So this is heavily silicone based, but of course glycerin is a really great emollient. So um, you can use that on the skin. It's going to smooth and it's said to diminish the appearance of dark circles under the eyes and just really bring about a smoothness, brightness and just the deep puffiness that happens under the eye area that a lot of us want to get rid of. I don't want to go too deep into the um, ingredients too much because there's a lot of ingredients in the La Mer products but again the seaweed alone is giving you um, like I mentioned in the earlier part of this video a ton of properties so even if you see seaweed in these products you're knowing that you're getting a ton of products a ton of properties and benefits just from that one thing and what they call the clarity ferment is what is seaweed in this particular eye cream okay friends the next product is the creme de la mer and this is the moisturizing cream we've all heard about this one this is their best seller this is rich with that lime tea extract it also has sesame seed oil which is a great balance of omega-6, 3, and 9. And this also has seaweed as the first ingredient on the list, and then everything else is afterward. It is said that this is for dry skin. It is a very rich, as you can see, very rich texture. This does not bother me. I have this actually for my hands as well. I am really concentrating on my hands now because we're washing our hands a ton. But as you can see, once you work it in, it really does bring um, a good amount of moisture and hydration to the skin. But the smell of this 
Oh, it's not offensive at all. Actually, I enjoy the smell of it. So I'm going to show you this hand that has, well, it's no compar- Well, can you see the comparison contrast? This hand is dry. This hand is with the Le Mer. Okay, friends. So I want to answer the question because this was one that um, a lot of you asked me. And it was, why the price point? So I'm going to tell you why. This is a very labor intensive process. Okay, and I know that we are quick to jump on, it's expensive, don't bother with it, go elsewhere. Again, I'm not here to tell you anything that is going to uh, influence your buying experience except about the product itself and the brand. There are three to four divers that go on small boats to hand pick this sea kelp. And that is transported back to Melville where it's put on ice and this broth takes about three months to make. After they've made the broth, they actually go in and they make the lime concentrate, which takes another six weeks to make. The original cream is actually hand filled and that has to be done at a specific temperature. So this is very labor intensive. And if you remember in previous videos, when I talked about luxury uh, skincare brands and why the price point, uh, it really is about sourcing, um, labor, marketing, packaging, a lot goes into the premiums. Now with this particular product, the Creme de la Mer, there is no really fancy packaging with this, um, except the fact that the sea kelp and just making this product alone is very labor intensive. So that's why, um, you know, it's very expensive, the sourcing and the labor behind making Le Mer's product. I talked about, you know, maybe three of their products. They have a long list of uh, really great products. Again, just remember this does have fragrance in it. So if you already have allergies, you know, eczema, rosacea, that kind of thing, I would, you know, figure out whether or not you really want to mess around with this with it having fragrance in there. Again, this is the truth behind skincare. Hopefully you guys would like, subscribe, and share. Leave your comments down below. I look forward to talking with you and corresponding with you in the comments. Let me know what other brand you'd like me to bring to your attention in this Truth Skincare series. I'll be happy to do that. I actually have had some people talking to me about some other high-end brands, but um, I'm I'm just bringing in all of your all of your um, suggestions and questions and taking the time out to write all of these down so that I can cover them in my next videos. Love you all so much and I'll talk to you in my next one. Ciao for now.